The initial Chinese intervention was by air. Piston engine fighters attacked American aircraft. Then came the swept wing jets, MiG-15s. The first all jet battle in history took place on November 8, 1950. F-80s of the 51st Interceptor Wing were jumped by MiGs. The F-80s were clearly outclassed. The MiGs were a brilliant design. They combined Russian and German technology. The MiGs represented a real threat to air superiority. If employed in sufficient numbers, they would drive UN aircraft in the air at the time of greatest need. The UN forces were roughly thrown back by more and more Chinese troops crossing the border. Orders began to come from MacArthur's headquarters that would be echoed one war later in Vietnam. The general wanted the bridges across the Yalu River destroyed to slow the oncoming Chinese reinforcements. But only the portions on Korean territory were to be attacked. There was to be no violation of Manchurian territory or airspace. As a result, the bombers had to make their runs parallel to the river. This exposed them for the greatest length of time to anti-aircraft fire. It also exposed them to the MiGs. The MiGs would circle at altitude to locate a target. They'd make a diving attack across the Yalu River through the bomber formations. They could then streak back to safety on the other side of the river. Fortunately, most of the time, the MiGs were not aggressive. There was time to bring in the fourth fighter interceptor wing of F-86 Sabres from the United States. Like the U.S. Cavalry riding to the rescue, eager and aggressive Air Force pilots took the North American F-86 to Korea to fight the Soviet MiGs. With its swept wings, powerful armament, and high maneuverability, the F-86 soon made itself king of MiG Alley. Less well known, but perhaps even more important, was the arrival of the 27th Fighter Escort Wing of Straight Wing Republic F-84 Thunder Jets. The Republic F-84 Thunderjet was the premier ground attack fighter of the Korean War. Able to operate out of primitive airfields, carrying huge loads of bombs, rockets, and napalm, the F-84 struck continuously at enemy troop concentrations, bridges, trains. Once its ordnance was gone, it was able to turn with the MiGs at low altitude. All in all, the F-84 was a great fighter, the right plane at the right time. As the 8th Army fought its desperate retreat, sometimes the only thing that changed destruction to escape was the timely appearance of the Thunder Jets, laden with rockets, napalm, and bombs. The F-84s of the 49th Group made the waters of the Chongchong River literally run red with the blood of Chinese infantry. Air attacks accounted for more than 33,000 Chinese dead by the end of December. But the Chinese strength was overwhelming. An estimated 500,000 men pushed the UN forces back. They swept on past Seoul, overrunning the F-86 bases and forcing the Sabres return to Japan. The early model Sabres were temporarily out of the war, limited by their short 490 mile range. The Chinese had succeeded in inverting doctrine. They had gained air superiority through controlling the airfields. They began stockpiling huge quantities of MiGs in the Manchurian Sanctuary so they could be brought down into Korea for the final push. But continual attrition by air attack and stubborn ground defense had bled the Red Army. The UN forces counterattacked. They drove the Red Army forces back far enough to allow the F-86 air bases to be reestablished. The air war in Mig Alley, a triangular corner south of the Yalu River, resumed. Again, almost every condition was advantageous to the communists. Flying from bases in the Manchurian sanctuary, 
the MiGs could choose the time and place of attacks. But the sanctuary was not always observed. Look back in. The F-86s were operating at the limit of their range. They had only a few minutes to spend on station. There were about 300 MiGs available against 90 to 127 F-86s. But these were nominal strength, with probably no more than half available operationally on either side at a given moment. The F-86 was considered superior to the MiG in most respects. The MiGs had a higher ceiling and a better rate of climb, but the Sabres had better armament and were better gun platforms. At the start of the conflict, the Sabre pilots were generally more experienced. As time went on, new pilots right out of flying school joined the F-86 units. Some were firing their guns for the first time in combat. On the whole, the USAF training and spirit were superior to that of the communists, who were only occasionally aggressive. A part, that is, from the honchos, Soviet pilots flying for North Korea. In the end, the figures told the story. 792 MiGs were shot down at the cost of 78 F-86s. This 10 to 1 ratio was to breed a costly degree of overconfidence in the next war. Although America clearly won the air war in Korea, that fact has been forgotten. Few now remember the utterly valiant work done by crews flying World War II equipment under some of the worst weather and operating conditions in history to save the UN forces from both tactical and strategic defeat. Even less well known are the critically important efforts of the Combat Cargo Command. It hauled troops in and evacuees out and carried ton after ton of cargo where no roads reached. The scale was smaller than in World War II, but its importance was just as crucial, the preservation of air superiority. 